channel the youtube this is nate rider and i'm uh, really sorry i haven't been able to introduce myself all this while because you saw how fred i was in the previous video my friend who's the uh, actual owner of the youtube uh, channel is being a real cunt and he doesn't want to be seen in his videos so i'm here stuck making his own uh, making his introductory videos and uh, i thought i'll just give you a small introduction about him and uh, yeah his name is makmal aka velvet <laughs> Jokes apart, uh, the guy behind the camera here is uh, Top One and uh, yeah, he's a big shit rider. Exactly why he put shitty ass emoticons in my video last time. Coming closer to the agenda of the video, uh, like it or not, you'll have to bear with my face until Mr. Top One here eventually plans to get out of the blanket and make his videos for himself. But uh, look at it, considering the beautiful weather of Bangalore, it doesn't seem to be happening in a few decades to come. So yeah, until then, it's just you and I. So till then, ride hard, ride safe. Peace, people. By the way, what you see behind uh, all of this is my Hot Wheels collection and yeah, I'll make a different video for all of you to see what I have. Anyways, uh, yeah, these are my plants and uh, for whoever is interested, I'll make another video for all of you so that you can check out my plants. So yeah, I think it was in the early year of 1975 uh, when the Yamaha Lords actually blessed us with a piece of machinery which the entire Europe had flipped on. Yeah, I'm talking about the legendary RD350. And then scenes happen because uh, Indians being Indians and considering the barren narrow roads, people actually either ran into themselves or ran into walls here with this bike. And this bike was eventually discontinued because it was not supposed to be here. I mean, it was supposed to be in the Isle of Man and not in the nice road. You know, even though there was no nice road back then, but you get the point. And the bike also had multiple issues like uh, bike deti nahi hai. Kitna deti hai? For a country obsessed with mileage. Obviously, it's a RD350 uh, twin cylinder, twin carburetor engine. I mean, you don't expect it to just run on thin air, you know. Considering the Indian version, there were other complaints like bike rukhtini because all the European and Japanese builds came with disc brakes whereas to consider the cost cutting in the Indian market, they had to resort to Jurassic Era's drum brakes. I can't believe India is still selling bikes with drum brakes. I mean, so the RD350 died here, I think it was the year 1985 and the RD350 came to an end. And then came the era of the RX100. This lean ass machine cannot be called a successor to the RD350. Yeah, but it sure came up to the expectations of its equally angry younger brother. It was light, it was sleek, it was fast. It became a fad among the youngsters of then. This is eventually banned due to pollution norms and enormous increase in crimes uh, on these bikes across the country. India being India, we could not stop the crimes, so might as well just ban the bike. So we killed the RX-100 also there. I mean, this was I think in the year 1995, I guess. Yeah, the RX-100 came to an end. So as a successor to the RX-100, the Yamaha presented us with the RX-G and the RX-135 with catalytic converter to match up with the pollution norms. It also came up with a 5-speed addition. However, Yamaha had lost out of the share in the market because by then, a lot of competitors were in the market with the same 100cc. Suzuki Samurai was an instant hit among the masses because of its uh, ad, the no problem ad. In a nutshell, Yamaha crowd was starting to get niche, it was already starting to get niche then. And Yamaha tried to bring in the RXZ in the Indian market but it did not appeal much to the masses of then because RXZ is nothing but sheer performance and no one at that time was looking for that much power. They just wanted something to commute and they had just come out of the whole horror of the RD350. So for the longest time, uh, Yamaha did not release any uh, quality bikes for India and uh, yeah, Yamaha basically gave up on the old generation. They released really uh, obsolete looking bikes like the old uh, Libero and the old Phaser. They basically gave up on the old generation until they came up with the whole uh, FC and the Phaser series. Soon after that, the RM5 version 1 was released. But by then, uh, Hero and Bajaj were already working on bikes which are 220cc and above. The other thing is, yeah, soon after the RM5 version 2 was released, KTM Duke 200 was released and the NS200 was released. So, 
uh, Yamaha had pretty good competition and uh, we were looking at the FZ25 then, not now when, uh, I mean, bike manufacturers are producing bikes which are 350cc and above. So on the same note, yeah, Yamaha fans were really looking forward to the uh, YZF and the MT series which were released in neighboring countries with India. And uh, yeah, I'm talking about the m Slash, the R125, the R25. Even though R3 was a failure here in India, I mean, Yamaha should have totally tried their hands on the MT-03 here. Because its counterpart, Street Fighter, the Duke 390, is doing pretty good in terms of sales for the past couple of years. And uh, yeah, I mean, it would have done well is what I feel. And uh, Vixen R is another bike, what we feel would have really done good in the roads of India. But yeah, we haven't seen it yet. And I don't know, is Yamaha even awake? Like... So lately Yamaha has been losing out on a lot of fans, uh, especially due to lack of bikes from Yamaha and yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean when fan needs to upgrade to something bigger and better, they really need to move out of their comfort zone and look at competitors like uh, KTM and Benelli who are offering much uh, powerful bikes at pretty reasonable prices, you know. I might get a threatening call from Asano Sun or some big official from Yamaha for making this video but I don't care. I mean for me it's just about, I'm just trying to put my words across which I feel is wrong and it's, moreover it's not about something I feel that is wrong, something that I feel that uh, big companies like Yamaha can strategize on and uh, work on, act on because they're rapidly losing out on a lot of customer base if they don't really act on this fast. So I'm just going to stop venting out all the pent-up frustration that I've had for years now and making this video any longer. But I really hope I put a word across for all you Yamaha fans who are going through the same, I mean, going through the same plight as I am. And uh, yeah, please comment on whatever you feel and uh, please put a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Signing out, Metra from Velvet Vijay. So the conclusion part of this uh, whole uh, video was made at uh, Cowan Park and I'm just going to show you a few small snippets of this place around so that people who don't know about it can you know just check check it out it's a really beautiful place really beautiful and calm place 